The key to success in working molarity problems or in dealing with molarity is simply remembering that molarity is moles of solute per liter of solution. It's probably the most important method used for designating the concentration of solutions. And there are many ways of designating concentration, but this is the one that is most universally used. Molarity, by definition, is moles of solute per liter of solution. And remember, that is liter of solution. Or, if you will, a shorthand notation is N for moles over L for liters, but you have to remember, that's liters of solution. We very often make a solution using molar concentrations in one of these devices called a volumetric flask. Now this is a particularly interesting volumetric flask that I'm showing you a picture of. It's a volumetric flask that is calibrated either 90 or 100 milliliters at 20 degrees Celsius. The lower line on the neck has a volume of 90 milliliters when filled to that point. The upper fill line shows a volume of 100 milliliters. It gives the, the flask a little more versatility. But quite frankly, you're going to likely see only one volume on a volumetric flask. 100 milliliters, 200 milliliters, 250, something like that. And the temperature is the temperature at which that is accurate. Now, if the temperature varies just a little, it's not really going to hurt anything. But you don't want to use a hot solution in one of these if it's calibrated at 20 degrees Celsius, for example. And, oh yes, the volumetric flask is calibrated to contain. So when the bottom of the meniscus exactly rests on that fill line, you will know then what the volume of the solution contained within the flask is expected to be. Here's a problem. Let's calculate the molarity of a solution made by dissolving 5.4 grams sodium chloride in 250 milliliters of solution. Notice we were very careful to say 250 milliliters of solution. And what we do is we put in 5.4 grams of sodium chloride and we add some water to it in the volumetric flask. We dissolve the sodium chloride and then we add enough water to bring the bottom of the meniscus exactly onto the fill line so that we have 250 milliliters of solution. So to calculate this, let's first convert 5.4 grams to moles. 5.4 grams times 1 mole over 58.5 grams for sodium chloride now it tells us that we have grams canceling, but we've got to have moles per liter. So I multiply it by 1 over 0.25 liter, and that gives us 0.37 moles per liter, or, if you will, 0.37 molar. Calculate the molarity of a solution made by dissolving 10.3 grams sodium sulfate in 600 milliliters of solution. Another way of saying that would be to say in enough water to make 600 milliliters of solution, for example. We take our 10.3 grams times a mole over 142 grams. Did you remember that the formula for sodium sulfate is Na2SO4 times 1 over 0.6 liter gives us 0 0.121 moles per liter, or 0 0.121 molar. What's the concentration of the sodium ion in here? That's a good question. The concentration of the sodium ion is 2 times 0 0.121 molar is 0 0.242 molar because sodium sulfate decomposes to give us two sodium ions and one sulfate ion. How many grams of sodium hydroxide are needed to make 400 milliliters of a 1.5 molar solution? Remember, molar or molarity is 1.5 moles per liter. Molarity is moles per liter. Remember that now. So 
So moles is equal to molarity times liters. We have 1.5 moles per liter times 0.4 liters. Our liters cancel. And that leaves us 0.6 moles. So we take our 0.6 moles times 40 grams per mole and find that we have 24 grams sodium hydroxide. So we needed to take 24 grams of sodium hydroxide, dissolve it in enough water to make 400 milliliters of solution, and we have a 1.5 molar solution. Brought to you courtesy of Chemistry Professor, offering complete chemistry courses on DVD. Visit us at our site on the World Wide Web at chemistryprofessor.com.